Boy Scout Survival and Bushcraft. I'm your host, Scott Nias. And today, we're going to be talking about the Shemak, which is a traditional Middle Eastern style scarf. Now, the Shemak has been made popular in modern times due to its excessive use by military personnel, law enforcement personnel, as well as wilderness enthusiasts like myself. It's due to its extreme versatility in austere wilderness conditions. This thing is an outstanding piece of kit with so many different uses other than its intended use. Today, we're gonna to be talking about three of those specific uses as a form of clothing to protect your head, your neck, and your face. So stick around, you're gonna learn something. you to pardon the appearance of this specific one um i've washed it and as a result it kind of shrank and kind of went a little weird on me there kind of scrunched up but uh follow the directions on the tag on how to uh clean this bad boy because i apparently did not and it, and it shows but this has a lot of wear and tear but as you can see it's got a square shape two sides have the cotton ties or toggles, mine are all kind of worn out, jacked up. But the way you want to create your coverings is entirely up to you. There are several different ways you can origami style fold your shemag to fit the need for covering your neck, your face, or your head but I'm gonna show you what I do and what has worked for me. So the first thing, uh, once you line it out into your square shape, you're gonna take one end and fold it back, triangular shaped into the other side. Now the pattern may vary or differ depending on the, the type, style, brand that you buy um, as to how the pattern goes. All right, this doesn't do it any justice on how it's supposed to be because like I said, it's got wear and tear. But make your triangle, right? Some people like to fold another longer rectangular portion to shorten it up a little bit. I don't typically do that, but others do to fit and feed their need, right? All right. I did what I said I wasn't going to do, and I folded it a little bit more to shorten it, but that's just so I can demo it and you guys can see for yourselves what you can do to shorten it, right? Now I'm going to throw this over my shoulders uh, without getting it caught up on the back bill of my hat, right? And as you can see, pulling it up, it covers the back, the sides, the front of your neck now you can tie it in the front however you choose right some people like to do a reef knot which is just right over left make an overhand knot and then left over right voila right i mean it looks different with the scarf but i mean right over left left or right you do a square knot or reef knot and um whatever look you're going for the way i like to tie it and this is just me this is just my preference almost like i'm tying a tie for church or business or whatnot right pull in the front and then you just kind of got this knot in front looks kind of good whatever um 
But in addition to protecting your neck for the weather, if you're a shooter and you're out there on the range, this can protect you from those around you who are firing from spitting hot brass down your neck, right? And on the same token, moving my hat, loosening this up, you can protect your head and your neck by sliding this up. And you know what? Just for this, I'm going to remove that folded portion that I had, right? So now I got my full big triangle. Throw this bad boy over my head. Ugh, right. And in the same manner that I did before, fold this. And that's two methods. Right? Protect your head and neck. Right? Now this can protect your head, your neck from the beating sun, the rain, the wind, or a hot piece of brass going down your shirt. And if I so decide that I no longer want to be sporting this, this look or the weather subsided and I want a little bit better visual to my right and my left, slide that bad boy down, right? There's also times that I'm wearing layers of clothing, such as a button-up shirt or a jacket. Rather than having this hanging out over front, I'll tuck it in, right? So I don't have anything obstructing or that can possibly catch on a branch or anything else. Those are just a couple things, tips for you. Now, the next one I wanna show you, the third, is the full-blown head, neck, and face cover. For this next one, I'm gonna show you step by step, okay? Pardon me as I remove my head cover. All right, so once you've gotten your triangle fold on your Shemak, you're gonna throw this bad boy over your head. From the center line, you're going to cant it. What I do is right dominant. I cant it to my right, making a longer end and a shorter end. Uh, this may take a couple practices if you've never done this before, if you don't know how to do it, right? Um, there are different methods of doing this type of face covering, um, depending on the style that you like or the manner, or if you're just trying to get it done to cover your face, protect yourself this is the best way I've found okay so once you got your longer side your shorter side right about there should do it right I'm gonna take my long side and I'm actually gonna fold it back around and behind and it's gonna leave this little smaller portion that I bring back over my shoulder right here right I'm gonna bring it all the way around, making small adjustments here and there for my vision, for my head, right? I'm gonna wrap it around my head, right? Then I'm gonna take the support side, my non-dominant side, or my left hand, my Walter Cronkite side, Right, Jack Johnson, Walter Cronkite. I'm gonna take my Walter Cronkite side. Oh, goodness. And then we will make a tie back behind my head. Now I'm just gonna do a quick overhand knot. I don't need to go through all the trouble fastening it however I need to fasten it. But remember how tight you fasten it will or it could be the difference of life and death. Don't freaking choke yourself out. Oh. Now, there are other methods of doing this wrap to make it tighter, to make it more origami beautiful, or what have you. Fit, fasten. I'm doing this quick, right? So I'm not going to go through the whole intricacies of making it look beautiful. But there you have it. 
another method. This covers my neck, this covers my head, and this covers my face. And if you are in an austerior desert type environment, I would also recommend a good pair of glasses, sunglasses, or goggles so you can cover your whole dome area, facial area, and have it protected from the elements, wind blowing sand in your eyes and potentially blinding you, so on and so forth. Oh, I gotta breathe. All right, now I'm gonna discuss or show you a few other things that you can do or things that you can utilize your Shemog for. Bonus. show you now is a few things that I have been gradually utilizing this Shemog for uh, just to practice my wilderness survival and bushcrafting skills so as you can see there's little pieces of it torn off already so what I want to show you is just how easily tearing off a few strands of this you're able to create cordage now just by tearing the strands off themselves or tearing a few strands off and braiding them together at least two three four right uh, depending on the strength of the cordage that you're looking for um, there you have it you have some excellent cordage that well right over left left over right square knot Another thing I have utilized my Shemog for uh, in aiding in the comfort of my journey out in the wilderness is just simply by taking the uh, Shemog and covering my day pack, right? I can even fold it up a couple times if I wanted to. And just tying this bad boy around my day pack. However, whatever, a couple overhand knots. I've got myself a wilderness pillow of sorts. Now you can also do that by just taking a whole bunch of extra clothing that you have, kind of bundling it up, 
I'm throwing it in the middle of this bad boy and uh, here you go. You got a little comfort for your dome. All right, I had to pull out my better condition Shimog for this one. Uh, a very underrated item, right, that the Shimog can be fashioned into is a over the shoulder or fanny pack. Oftentimes in emergency situations, our gear fails us and it behooves us to have backup gear to provide for our needs. So just to demonstrate how I might do that, I've uh, got my emergency fishing kit in here, got some uh, my waterproof uh, matches container, which also doubles as a container for water. Got my juke cord tinder source on there, my headlamp, another big lighter with this awesome casing that was um, actually given to me as a gift by a, a native friend who uh, made this awesome intricate design. Wanted to show that off. How cool is that? Um, my knife, water, first aid. Another uh, my ferro rod, a little design shell casing there, pretty cool. Dig this thing, all right? So what I would do, right? Put all my gear in there, yeah. Put some more gear. Cordage, ten is one, one is none, <laughs> right? And uh, wrap that gear up, nice and fine, all right? Me personally, I like the shoulder strap configuration over the fanny pack configuration. This way, my gear is closer to my my visual, right? And not so much if I've got it on my hip or on the, the back part of my hip as a fanny pack, you know? If things do, by chance, seem to slip out, I might not notice it. But this way, I got it right here to where if it by chance did happen to slip out i can see it maybe kick it step on it and get a good visual for it falling out right but great manner of carrying your gear in an emergency situation now this isn't something i'm demonstrating telling you hey this is how you should carry your gear in the wilderness no backup emergency wilderness survival right and one last thing I'd like to demonstrate that you can utilize your Shimog for, because there are literally dozens, if not hundreds of other things you can use this damn thing for, is um, these toggles on the side of your Shimog can be removed, separated, and included in your Tinder bundle for fire starting, right? Leave it on the side. Pull it off, right? However you want to do it. And let me show you. Ow, how quickly that burns. Kids, don't do that at home, okay? Uh, practice doing this stuff in a safe environment, not in your man cave right where you're attempting to film a demonstration video uh, and by chance if you do not smart things like that have a first aid kit on hand little burn cream do you wonders all right uh, now i realize that the last boy scouts hasn't gone out in the wilderness in quite some time stay tuned it's coming we just got to make some time and get out there but it's gonna happen and got a lot more to share with you. So stay tuned and as always, stay safe, stay vigilant. Knowledge is your weapon, be prepared. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Last Boy Scouts. If you like what you see, hit that like button. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more from The Last Boy Scouts Survival and Bushcraft.